the first decisions of a construction process are going to have consequences all the way through what you're building. One of the things that was an early choice that we were making, and that is the footings, first the excavation, then the footing size and location for these columns, while yes, they were called out on the plans, the decisions that I made about using a sauna tube instead of a square concrete column, and the elevation of the sauna tube has contributed to the choices that we've made about how to finish these columns off and make them a real plus in the design of this house and the curb appeal instead of either just a neutral or quite possibly a detriment. So if you have a real strong preference in what the columns on your front porch look like, you better speak up early in the construction process to make sure that choices you're making coming out of the ground, the siding material you use, the, the material that you use on the deck that the columns are going to land on, don't tie your hands and make it really problematic to end up with the columns that you've had your heart set on for maybe as long as you've been thinking about your project. In this project, the, the case in point is, first of all, I used a sauna tube form to make a 12 inch diameter round column, pier, come up a random distance above the finish height of the porch. I knew it could be a random distance because I was going to cover it with a column. But not using a square concrete column makes it a little problematic for attaching, let's say, a wooden base for a wooden column. Let's say it was going to be rectangular all the way up. So that would have complicated the choices around the shape and the material. The other thing that complicated an earlier decision, the choices that I could make about the material is, I used hardy plank cement board siding, lap siding. It would be problematic to, on a wooden base, put hardy panel in little short pieces lapping and not have them look just goofy with the hardy panel inside and a corner bat and it just would have been so busy and choppy and not really that structurally sound or long lasting. The third thing would be that attaching to a concrete base means that there's going to, this is always going to be washed off with water. There's going to be a lot of water sprayed in here. So anything that's made of wood, pressure treated or not, is going to be looking for an opportunity to rot away over time. So those three sort of criteria that were established way back in the construction process mean that I need to come up with masonry to the transition between vertical sides to the classic craftsman look of a tapered column going up to the beam. So this is a very common solution to column bases that are tall transitioning to some sort of a wood, you know, the upper two thirds in something made out of wood. And I could have and would have and would have enjoyed doing that if this porch would have been made out of wood. If this was a nice, you know, cedar or redwood or ipe or some other type of a wooden deck, I probably would have come out further and then these would have been wood tying into the wood, going up to the wooden overhang. It would have been great. It's nice to adorn your house tastefully with wood and wood designs. I mean, it's hard to beat that. But in this case, this house has an emphasis on rock, on stone, on concrete, on square and rectangular um, shapes. And so for all of those reasons, and for maintenance, we decided to come up off of here with the same masonry product that we used on our foundation. So the choice that you may be confronting about whether or not to use wood or masonry on your porches, on your columns, is it sort of revolves around two things. What your budget is and whether or not you like maintenance. If you have the money, it's a buy once, cry once kind of a deal with whether it's concrete or you know brick or stone because the maintenance is very close to zero. Only vandalism can hurt you know, this kind of a product. On the other hand, if you're comfortable with maintenance and some people kind of like it, you can maintain a wooden deck or wooden columns with paint or stain or sandpaper or wood filler or you know, there's a whole variety of products that can add life to wood in the outside. But sooner or later, somebody, whether it's you or the next owner, is going to have to replace that, which is all right. It won't cost all that much. But at that point, the cost of replacing the wood is going to be factored by somebody into the choice you're going to make about whether to go with concrete, masonry, or a wooden installation the first time. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman, and keep up the good work.